you know, one of the reasons that I really, really love Christmas is, you know, I didn't, I wasn't raised in a Christian family. I didn't get saved till I was 14. I didn't get filled with the Holy Spirit till I was 16. But Christmas time was always a time that I felt the drawing of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I always felt this place where God was drawing me into his presence. And even though I didn't have any real understanding about salvation, I didn't have any real understanding really about the whole thing about what Christmas was about or how, how important it was, um, there was something about that time of the year that always made God more real to me. Amen? You know, when you walk around the malls, where, what other time of year do you hear them singing Gloria and Excelsis Deo? Come on, when, when, at what other time do they say, oh, come all you faithful? And, and really basically preach the gospel in our malls and in our airports. We spent a lot of time in airports the last couple of days. They're, and they're playing Christmas songs, Christmas carols, giving glory to God. They're not just playing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. They're actually playing songs that bring glory to the Lord. Amen? And so I celebrate Christmas, and I celebrate the fact that Jesus came to the earth as Emmanuel, God with us, to demonstrate God's love to us. So I want to talk this morning about why Christmas matters. Okay, I want to start out by reading Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. And it's, it declares this out of the book of Isaiah. It says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For, to, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. This is the prophecy from Isaiah about Christ who would come as a child to be our redeemer. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let me tell you what those words mean. Wonderful actually means a wonder-working God, a miracle-working God. His name will be called Miracle Worker. How many need a miracle? Come on. His name will be called Miracle Worker. His name will be called Counselor. You know what that word means? It means advocate. It means like if you need a lawyer in the court of heaven, that Jesus will stand up and argue your case before the throne of God. Come on, so that the judge will bang his gavel and say, not guilty forgiven of every sin, every iniquity. Wonderful counselor, mighty God. You know what that word actually means? It means hero, champion. Jesus is our champion. We sing a song about that here. You know what a champion does? A champion fights battles for you so that you don't have to fight them. In the old medieval days, if somebody challenged you to a battle, a personal one-on-one -on -one battle, and you knew there was no way that you could actually win that battle, you went and you found a champion that could fight that battle for you and win. Jesus is mighty God. He's our hero. He's our champion. He fights battles for us that there's no way we could possibly win on our own. Mighty God, everlasting father. You know what this actually means? It means father of our future. The father of our future. You may not know what your future holds, but God does. He's the father of our future. And of course, the prince of peace. We talked about that quite a bit over the last season of time. That's the word shalom, which means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing damaged. It means blessing, prosperity, peace, wholeness, completion. But it also means that God gives us victory over every place of chaos in our life. Amen. Jesus rises up as the Prince of Peace. And it says, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord God Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Well, if this is the most wonderful time of the year, then why is it that some people hate it? 
Well, obviously, there sometimes Christmases can bring bad memories or, or like Pastor Tom said, you know, focus on loneliness. But you know that there's a whole group of people out there that are on a mission to eradicate Christmas. And over the last 15, 20 years, we've actually seen an amped up war on Christmas from people who do not believe Christmas should be celebrated on a societal level. And in the name of inclusiveness and political correctness, they've tried to completely stamp Christmas out. Kind of the Grinch that stole Christmas, right? But let me just give you a few examples of se several things that have happened. I remember back a number of years ago, um, Walmart decided that to be inclusive, they were going to stop saying Merry Christmas. How many remember this? They took Merry Christmas, they took Christmas out of all their advertisements. They didn't have Christmas, they had, they had holiday trees, they had holiday lights, they had holiday, um, uh, 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 everything that they were selling was holiday, not Christmas. And they forbid their employees from saying Merry Christmas. How many of y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? And so you know what? I just decided, we decided that as much as we enjoy going to Walmart, we weren't going to shop at Walmart that year. If they couldn't say Christmas, then they weren't going to get our Christmas money. <laughs> Come on. We didn't try to lead a revolution, but we made a personal decision, and we, that's what we did. But you know what else I did? I kept every single receipt... Of, of everything that I bought at Target or, uh, or online or every place else. I took all those receipts at the end of the year and I made copies of them and I sent them to the Walmart headquarters. I really did. And I just said, listen, normally I would shop at Walmart, but because you took Christmas out of everything that you said, and I know that a lot of other people throughout the nation did that too. Guess what? The next year, everything was Merry Christmas, Christmas trees, Christmas lights, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. And when you look at it today, every single store that tried to take Christmas out of their advertisement went down, and they all turned around, and you can see it all over everything, their websites, everything right now, because Christmas matters. Using the phrase Christmas, it's okay to say happy holidays, but let me just say, I say Merry Christmas because I'm making a statement that goes beyond just a cultural celebration. I'm making a statement that the earth is better because Christ came to earth and that that is something that we can celebrate. 